Hello, in this episode, we are going to talk about semiconductor physics. So, we are going to look at the atom, the behavior, and how to use the atom in semiconductors. So, the behavior of the atom brings about how we manipulate our conductivity of the semiconductor. Are we okay? Remember, we are going to use the electrons and the holes to cause the flow of current. So we have to understand the composition of the atom. So here we basically we know that all matter is composed of what? Atom. As atom is the basic of what? Anything of all matter is the basic, the simplest of matter. And so as we explain, the basic for every matter is atom, or the smallest particle is what? Atom. And there have been several models describing the atom. Are we okay? We saw J.J. Thompson, Lord Rutherford. So all these people, let's say J.J. Thompson, we also saw Lord Rutherford brought about how the atom looks like. And also we have nail balls who also brought about the behavior of the atom but in this episode we are going to adopt the explanation of nail balls which is more realistic as compared to the other scientists so according to Bohr he proposed that inside the atom there is an electron or there are electrons in the atoms the circle around the nucleus in different orbits, similar to the way planets orbit the sun. Are we okay? So this man, Neobor, is saying that the atom that we see or that we have as the simplest or the basic component of matter, when you look at it, there's a nucleus and there are shells around it. Not alone, when you look into the shells, there are electrons revolving around the nucleus at various shells. Are we okay? So this is the proposed idea of the atom by ball. And it is similar to how planets orbit the sun. Are we okay? So we have this idea. It is going to help us to know how to manipulate electrons and how to also get the holes. Remember, those two are the important factors, how to manipulate our electrons and how to make the absence create a hole, which is a positive charge. Are we okay? So we are saying that the Bohr's model is commonly used because it is easy to visualize. You can see that I'm able to draw the model as compared to what Lord Rutherford and J.J. Thompson proposed. Are we okay? And as I said, the other views of the atom, we will dive deep when you go deep, you see that there's a quantum model of the atom, which is considered as more accurate representation. So in as much as we are using the Bohr's model, the quantum model is the more specific or more accurate representation of the atom. But the problem is, it is very difficult for you to visualize. Meaning, if we want to explain, it is very difficult to show working. Are we okay? So let's stick to the Bohr's model. So here is an atom where we are using the Bohr's model. So here we are looking at what are the charges of the particles of the atom. So first we can see that an atom has an e a nucleus, a positive charge nucleus. And we also have various, these are the shells. These are the shells, these are the electrons, as we can see them. Negative charges, are we okay? So we have shell 1, we have shell 2, and shell 3. Each shell corresponds to a specific energy level. They are not the same, 
in terms of what energy because some are far away from the nucleus are we good so we are also going to look at the electrons you can see that on the first shell there are two electrons on the second we have eight and on the third we are having four of them are we okay so here we can talk about energy levels that the atom its nucleus is positive and its electron is also negative so between a positive charge and a negative charge there are going to be there's going to be an attraction right there's a pulling towards each other so you can see that the electron closer to the nucleus has high pull to the atom and those far away they are going to have a lesser pull to the nucleus this makes the electrons further from the nucleus to be high in energy they have high energy please pay attention to this because this is the basis for our electricity generation are we okay now if the electron is far away from the nucleus it has high energy so meaning any small amount of energy you add let's say a heat energy you add to the electron it becomes excited and it leaves its orbits because now it has high energy and also the bond between it and the nucleus is less because of what the large distance meaning you can just remove it by applying much what heat you explain the ionization process so that you understand it very well are you okay but now you have to know that the far away the electron from the nucleus the higher the energy and the easier for it to escape from its shell or from the val valence electron so these are the outer shells are we good where electrons are being removed or we let them escape so that their movement will cause what electricity or generation of currents are we good now let's look at the maximum number of electrons in each shell now this is a formula that relates to the number of electrons each shell can accommodate where n is the number of shells so if i have the let's call this this is our nucleus i have my first shell my second shell and this is my third shell are we okay so by the use of the formula number of electrons for each shell is 2n squared n is the number so this is first shell second and third so let's look at the number of electrons the first shell can contain so 2 multiplying it is the first shell right that is going to be 2 1 raised to the power square is what 1 which is 2 so the first shell is only capable of taking two electrons nothing more nothing less now let's look at the second one so number of electrons for the second is going to be 2 by 2 square is called 2 so that is going to be 2 multiplying 2 square that's 4 4 to 8 so the second shell will only have to take 8 of them so until it is fully filled, you cannot move. It has to take eight. Are we okay? Now let's look at the third shell. It is going to be two by three square. Are we good? And that is going to be one. Now if we have three square, that is two by nine. And that is 18. Are we good? Now the fourth shell is going to be 2 by 4 square. So that is going to be 2 by 4 square. That is 16. And that is going to give us 32. So that in that order. So if we are going to arrange the electrons, you have to obey this rule to assign the electrons to the various shells. And we have seen that the further you go from the nucleus, 
the more energy the electrons are having. Have a good. All right. So this part, the test shell is able to accommodate 18 of the electrons. Quite simple. Now we are talking about the valence electrons and ionization. We saw that the valence electron are the electrons at the outer shell, the last shell. So this is the last one. And that is the valence shell, the outermost. Are we okay? So we are seeing this atom. So this is an atom model by Paul. And we can see that there is an arrangement of electrons. So the first cell is taking the two, the second is taking the eight, the third is taking the 18 and the last one is only having one. And what we can see is that this one is now having high energy because it is far away from what? The nucleus. And now meaning any small energy that we add to this electron, it will make it to what? Move from its shell, its valence shell to what we call the conducting band. If this is what? A conductor. It will make it to move so easily such that we will have the movement of electron to cause a current so that our aim of generating what? Electricity or conducting electricity will be what? Achieved. Are you okay? So this is just an electron that orbits far from the nucleus saying it has high energy and it is less tight bond to the atom because those closer to the nucleus are more bonded. So it will be very easy to remove that this electron as compared to removing this electron. Are we okay? So ionization is just talking about the amount of energy we will need to cause this electron to a size such that it will move from its position to the conducting position. Are we okay? That is what ionization. The more energy we apply, it will be easy for this one to move as compared to any of this part moving because they are now bonded. There is a positive and negative attraction between the nucleus and the electrons. It is very simple. Are we okay? So, in that case too, we have what we call the covalent bonding. And when atoms are tightly packed together or placed closer to one another, they tend to share electrons in the outermost shell. This is due to electronegativity, which explains the ability of an atom to pull electrons towards itself. Now we know that the shell, we have to arrange them 2, 8, 18, 32. So in a situation where if we have an atom which is having 2, 7 in its shell, remember this needs 1 to complete, right? Yes. If we also have another atom which is also similar like this, which also needs just an electron to complete its second shell. When you bring them together, they are going to share their electrons so that if I share one of yours and you share one of mine, we will have 8-8. Eight, eight. Do you see that? So this explains the bonding between hydrogen and chlorine. So this is hydrogen with one electron. Remember, the first shell two is supposed to have oh, two of the electrons. And this is um, our chlorine, which is also have, is, ha is having seven at eight. So this is two, 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 and it's having seven at eight valence shell. It is supposed to have eight. So now hydrogen needs one, chlorine is also needing one. What would they do? They would just bond and they will share the electron. So hydrogen is going to give one of its electron to the 
chlorine and chlorine is also going to give one of its electrons to hydrogen such that they will achieve a stable configuration. So this is all about covalent bonding. We have ionic bonding which involves a complete transfer. They don't share, they transfer the electron to the other side so that you take it. Are you okay? But here we are interested in the covalent bonding as they share the electron. So this episode is also explaining basically the electronic configuration of atoms and how we can represent the Bohr's model. So this is also just the beginning of a whole lot of episodes. Thank you for watching the episode. Please subscribe to the channel and check out for the next episode for more understanding. See you.